and everyone here for coming. Um, can you hear me? You're getting close to it now. How's that? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's the microphone. Yeah, it's the microphone. Okay. Well, I'll try to pick it up. So I've been here since I believe 2002 or three. Not exactly quite sure how how long, but it's been wonderful. I love the gallery. I thank Charles Platt every time I come in here. We're so fortunate to have this fabulous building and, and great association where artists can come and share ideas and share their work. And here we go. Well, life as an artist on the farm. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, I have these cows on my mask, but. <laughs> uh, when we came to Connecticut, I lived with my husband, who's an ornithologist, so we go birding and painting together. But we lived in this old manor house that we were restoring. And it had the bones of a, a, a formal garden and lots of great trees. Farms in the area, but a little more remote. And I'll show you a few things that I did while there. It was. Uh, as you can see, it was kind of formal. It had a round side, and uh, it was a real interesting structure. And I planted about 200 trees and shrubs and painted them. I always painted them what I planted. Gardening and painting became a, a co-passion for me, my whole life, actually. So this was Rosa Peckham's house, who was also an artist. And I love living in artists' houses and actually do now, which I'll tell you more about in a few minutes. Uh, I grew this old rose over the wall, and people would stop and photograph it, but I couldn't stop painting it. It was so beautiful and so full of flowers. So this one I kept for myself, <laughs> but I did uh, pass a couple on to others. Um, but as a, as a farm, it also ha it, it had it had a barn. My husband's tractor. Let's see if I can put my hands on the barn painting. Uh, was, no, I guess not. It did have somewhere in my midst a, a nice old barn that was always full of flowers in the foreground. But about seven years ago, we moved to a real farm. This was our retirement home. I don't know who was retiring, but <laughs> uh, my husband and I began restoring this other house. And he farms vegetables, and I farm flowers, and I paint them and eat them, all of that. But having a farm gives you the opportunity to have lots of fun vehicles like this, and he's really enjoyed having that. But as an artist, I must tell you that I never liked to draw. I didn't come into being an artist drawing. I really came painting. I started painting from the time I could hold a brush, hold a pencil. Uh, someone gave me a paint by numbers when I think I was six, and that was the end of it. Uh -huh. uh, and I always painted with my brush and drew with my brush. but. I always thought I couldn't really draw well. But I worked really hard at it and have pretty much trained myself to draw. And if you can draw a tractor like that, I guess you can draw. Because you look at a tractor and you think, oh, it's, it's perfectly uh, uh, you know, even and everything works like that. But it's not that way at all. It's over here, it's over there. So you really have to, you have to know how to draw. And, and be able to see. And that's really what all of this is about, seeing. And what you think about what you see. Well, for me, I started out painting on location a lot. I think I went outside probably in my 30s. I started out at Ringling School of Art and painted outside there. That was part of our training, which was great training. But then coming back north to the Northeast, it wasn't common that people went outside at that time in the 70s and 60s to paint. But I ended up going back outside, and I think my work just grew exponentially doing that. Um, and I still do that. I go out all the time around my property. And our new farm, 
I go out every morning with my coffee and walk around and look. And it might be five o'clock. I like to watch the sunrise every morning if I can.、Um, sometimes I'm watching the sunset instead of the sunrise, but at least I'm watching what's going on. But I like to walk around the farm, and I call it my practice. So I paint little vignettes of things that are around there, and while I put them out on the walls. For me, I wouldn't say that they're my real work; they're my practicing being an artist. So I want to make sure I'm drawing and painting something every day, and I'm constantly looking at it and thinking about it all the time. No matter what else I'm doing, actually, no matter what I'm doing, I'm always painting in my mind when I should be doing other things. But so around the property. I'm always finding something. I have about 250 different daylilies, so I like to paint those too because actually, it it helps you learn how to mix colors. Which, if you can paint flowers, flowers are really hard. They don't follow anymore the prismatic palette because these botanists have botched it all for the artists by messing around and making these fabulous, delicious. Colors of flowers that aren't—they're really not part of the prism. So, actually, a friend who paints today came over and said, "Couldn't we just sit in your garden and I—I I would practice making colors with you?" Said, That's a great thing to do. And you can throw them out, you can put them on your wall, whatever it is. You're learning something just by doing that, even if it isn't some of your serious work. How many of you are artists? Almost all of you. <laughs> okay, I'll remember that. So, on this new farm, new old farm, I don't do as much plein air painting as I've done in the past. My work has evolved in a different way, which I'll get into more. But I like to occasionally set a model up and. Paint the garden. It's a huge challenge. <laughs> it's a complicated subject, and it's just fun to see what what you can do with it. If you can't see it there, I will.、Um, I'll move them around, and you'll, you're welcome to come up and look at them when, when we're done.、Um, so while I'm painting these paintings from my farm and Doing my sketches, as I told you, I consider that my practice and part of my development constantly as as I'm creating art. But I don't really consider it my real art. It's it's art, but it's not art from my soul. It's art more from my my head, and it it you understand, right? <laughs> If you're an artist, so every year, especially in the winter, I love painting outside. Even in the snow,、um, I like to find somewhere where I have lots of opportunity to go to the same place. Because in the winter, you have more more days that can be the same. Mostly they're gray, but so you can go back if you want to and keep working on the same painting. Um, this is a place I visited, and the way I work in the winter now. I used to bring my big canvas and go out days and days and days.、Um, in my、uh, older age, I don't want to suffer anymore. <laughs> so I go out and I do a small sketch, a study, and I'll bring it in and look at it and do the intellectual work. In my studio, and from there, from this study,、uh, I had a big painting that I exhibited here, and I will draw it all in in my studio, lay it all out, and basically do a color study in very thin wash that might have a little tonal value to it also. So when I go back out into the stu out into the The cold again. 
I've got that much done. I don't have to spend three or four hours doing that, freezing, like we used to do. And then I can start really painting and paying attention to what's happening. Well, this particular place, the sunset over here, but there were always these giant clouds that would, would come in. And in the big painting, I, I often change them because I learned something. I got better at it. I understood the place. If I go out and work on it a few times, it becomes part of me. I know that. I own that place visually, internally. I know what to expect. I know where the sun's going to go. I, it's a different kind of ownership. So with this painting, this was my small study, and when I went out there and I had it all laid in, it actually almost painted itself. It turned out to be one of my best paintings that year. It, it, um, it went on to win the gold medal in Rockport, and it has a wonderful home now. <laughs> so that seems to be a, a good way for me to work in the winter. Um, painting, while well, it's very serious to me, it's also, it's humorous. If you paint cows, you can't help but, <laughs> but be amused. They're so funny what they do. And sometimes, years ago, I would see these cows all sitting out in a perfect arrangement and you know, pull over and set up my easel. And by the time I lifted it up to start painting, they were all in my face. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I know they're going to do that. And, I'm ready for them, but I, I like to kind of have a little amusement and, and fun um, with it. So last, last winter was very hard on all of us, as you know, we're still under the effects of COVID. But for me, and I'm sure for other artists, it was really an opportunity to focus inward the, all of the peripheral things that we used to do, all the dinner parties and the parties and almost everything that took us away from our art and ourselves and our own thoughts and feelings was gone. And you were free to, for me and other artists, to really just focus on your work. And I have to say that was, that part of it got me through this very, very bad time that we are still in, but now I know how to deal with it. So we had an October surprise. I don't know if any of you remember what happened in October. October 30th, we had a snowstorm. <laughs> uh, I had to do a painting of it. It really inspired me. It's hard for me to find a lot of things that I say, oh, that inspired me. But I had my husband chauffeuring me around, and I, I was just like a crazy woman. It was so beautiful, the, the orange on the snow and the blue. and the, oh, Anyhow, so that was a painting that I did that was total inspiration. A lot of paintings are perspiration, I have to admit. But <laughs> that's as it should be, I guess. So that was October. November, December, I was driving around looking, which I'm always doing, but I went to this farm I had painted in the past, and I hadn't ever made a successful painting there. It was a farm that had a hill, and it went down, and the only place where you could really stand, where I don't like to bother people, so this was up on the road. I was looking down on it, and all the roofs got flat, and I really didn't have a good view but I tried many times. <laughs> this time, I knocked on their door and asked them if I could paint right at their property because while the farm goes up this hill, there's a stream that also went uphill, or you know, of course it came downhill and became a brook, but the cows would go up and down that hill by the light, by the by me, if I was there, they all came down to me, then they went back up the hill, and so it was back and forth all day long. If they saw the farmer bring a bale of hay, they almost ran up the hill. <laughs> but, so I finally got down into their location where I could really feel like something was there for me. And this is one of the paintings that I did 
while I was there. That's one of the almost last ones. And I'll show them all to you. I think I did six paintings this winter from this place. And I may have kindly, but I'm going to show you the process that I went through working there. The first time I painted there, it was just a small one. Again, you know how I am. <laughs> so this is the little 9 by 12. So I could do this in a couple hours and get it enough. So it's, I never really finished them out in the field. I always bring them in and you know, give them a like, what are you kind of look and figure out what it has to happen for it to become a real work of art. So this was it. There was water there. And I love having a water feature because you get that fabulous light reflection. Um, so I started with this one. I think this one was, um, oh, I think it was December 7th or something was one of our few snowstorms early in December. And then I started going there every day. And they were very generous. No one bothered me. I wore a mask. I didn't wear a mask. I got to know them all, all the, the farm family. They were lovely people, as most of them are. And I just painted all through the winter. Um, how I work? How you kept warm? How you kept warm? How did I keep warm? <laughs> I knew somebody would ask me that. <laughs> no one ever bothers me when I'm out painting in the winter. You see this, you go, oh. <laughs> um, I have a suit. It, it's, uh, it's an Arctic wear suit, and um, somebody else could fit in it with me. My painter friend Bob always said that we should stand back to back and keep each other warm that way. He could paint that way, I could paint this way. and uh, <laughs> It was that big. But I could put on a lot of layers if I needed to. Robert, does it affect the consistency of the paint? Hand? I, you know, I can't hear you. The consistency of the paint. The consistency of the paint, that is never a problem. Okay. It's only you that are the, a problem. <laughs> your hands, your face. Um, I got frostbite once. I'm very careful about that. I wear a mask when I'm out. It's not this kind of mask. It's an it's a Arctic mask that, if it's really cold, you breathe into it, and it cleanses your breath, and you don't pass out. <laughs> you get to paint. <laughs> and then I have one that's for not such cold weather, but your mouth is open and your, your nose, you can breathe. But it does keep your face warm. You get frostbite on your cheekbones first. It's really bad takes about three years to heal, but it does. <laughs> so I would, you know, go out wearing that. But in the winter, I only spend three to four hours, no, no longer, That's and, and sometimes not even that long. If I'm working on a painting like this, I might, by the time I've got it to that level, I might only spend an hour and a half, two hours, and then I'll go back again. But at some point, I stop going back, and it becomes a studio piece where I'll finish it in the studio. And that's where you have to make intellectual decisions as well as emotional decisions. And I'll show you, let's see. So that was. One which became, um, this was number two. Um, I started out painting there, and a big storm came over, I guess the second time I went back, and I totally changed what I had had. So the painting kind of evolves, and at some point, you know, you have to marry what you're doing, that's it, and stop making all the changes and go with what you're doing. And that's difficult for me, because if you're standing outside and you're seeing all these great things, oh, you want to chase all of it. You can't. You, ha you have to stop. Or you won't ever finish anything. Here was number three. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a terrible copy of it. But um, it was, again, late in the day, because I only go out 
at the good light times. You will never find me outside painting at lunchtime <laughs> uh, or in the middle of a day at all. I like sunrise and sunset and, or, or dusk or just as the sun's going down late in the afternoon where you get that, you feel the passion of the sky. And I feel like that's my real calling. If it doesn't have that fierceness to it, I'm, I don't, I'm not interested. So it has to hold my interest. I don't know how those were. So those paintings all started, here's another sketch that I think this might have become this. I got rid of the tree, it wasn't working. Uh, the, the color was too cold. If a snow painting is too cold, it's not very appealing. Um, nobody wants to be cold. <laughs> we all want to be warm, right? So those were the paintings I worked on in the summer, I mean in the winter, going out and beginning them there. And then from all of that, from the first painting, from this painting, it became what I consider of the series the real deal. The, the one that is my heart. Um, that was a big painting. And I did all of it in my studio. And I could only do that studio work because of all the labor I put in, you know, through the bad times. So I think I was working on that in March. And it was hard <laughs> because I couldn't go back out. They're related, he wants to know, okay. It's similar, but it's not quite the same. Cheating, I don't know. Think about this, Monet did 48 haystacks and nobody cares, right? <laughs> People never say, oh, you painted another blue sky. You did another sunset. Well, it does go down every day. Right? <laughs> Do I get a pass on that, right? Um, so they're related, and I learned from each of them, and I had a lot of fun with the cows in this one. Again, like I said, they would walk up the hill, they would come down the hill. And they had a rhythm to them, as they always do. You know, a lot of it has to do with how we are, our rhythm. It's all about food. <laughs> You're going to feed me, so I'm coming down. Um, but the light, the light in the water was... It was everything, which brings me to a, another real point about being a painter, whether you're on a farm, whether you're you know, outside in the street. It can't just be a pretty picture. It has to have something for me. Uh, everything I'm telling you is about my personal feeling. It, you know, it's not a law, but it's got to have something that grabs you, that tells you what the artist was thinking or feeling or what the place was feeling. I feel like the sky is, it's the face of the world. And it tells you whether you're gonna have a good day or a bad day. <laughs> Just think of yesterday or the day before <laughs> yesterday. Um, the sky had lots of drama and, and was giving us some kind of message or warning. And of course, we heated that. And that's what makes an interesting painting to me. It has to have some of the passion that I feel inside. I feel it for my work. I feel it for my life. I feel it for painting and art and artists and the history of art. You know, so I'll share with you a, a couple more pieces related to farms different farms. Um, the year before that, the year before this farm, I seem to have to focus in and really work someplace over. I have to see all of the opportunities there, all of the different light effects, all of the different feelings to it. Uh, and that makes it mine and that gives me a whole vocabulary in my painting and, and what it's going to be. Well, here's another farm. I'm sorry, this is a bad <laughs> photograph of it. But I spent a lot of time at this farm 
working with one of my students. It was, it's right down the road from us. Most of these are no more than seven or 10 minutes away from us. Um, but this is our friend, and he had these two cows, Kate and Katie. You never get their names wrong. <laughs> and I painted there a lot. I painted his cows many times, and he was going down to feed them. And that really, <laughs> it was sunset. They wanted their food. Um, and just from there, if you're at a place a long time, you see things that someone jumping out of their car and taking a photograph would never see. For example, the sky was blue when I got to this farm. This is around the corner from him. And if I had taken that picture or painted that painting, it might have been okay. Um, but I stayed, I stayed, I worked, I went back. And all of a sudden, one night, this big pink cloud, and you know how I feel about pink clouds, <laughs> came rolling in, and that was it. That was the song of that farm, and I didn't even get to put it on my wall. Um, and then, related to this painting, Again, if you explore somewhere, you're going to find lots of opportunities for paintings. This was the left side of the street. This was the right side of the street, and this became another giant painting. And I did many little sketches while I was there of that place, and they all became successful paintings. And if I had taken a photograph, jumped back in my car, I wouldn't have seen any of that. It's, you have to keep working at your work. More farm scenes. I didn't quite finish with that. This was the last painting I did from my farm last year. And it was March. Wasn't sunset. There was no sun that day. But I got to stay for the moon to come up. Um, so it, it still had something. And this was a real this painting was a real challenge because I didn't have the water to have that reflection help me find the right uh, composition or give you some interest. So it, I had to re rely on my own stuff to make a light effect that gave it a composition and a feeling, a flow, something that calls your eye in. So that is in Land and Light in Vermont right now. Um, and animals. <laughs> if you paint cows, they move, let's face it. Um, when I'm painting a cow, um, I usually paint them, I brought this to show you, I paint them like a blob. I know what they are, they're a box with legs, basically. So if I lay them in like that while I'm out in the field, they're not going to stay put for you. You might be able to spend hours and hours and, and really collect all the information you need to finish a cow. <laughs> but that's a challenge, and you'll miss everything else that's going on. So I paint them very simply, and that's part of what I do in my studio. I have tons and tons of drawings and little paint sketches of cows in all of the formations that they get into. But if I'm painting a cow on location and I have to finish it, he becomes a cow of 15. <laughs> Many cows will go by and they all do the same thing, just like we do. We keep a lot of the same movements. So they each you know, lift their leg in a certain way. And so my cow, a completed cow, might be a composite of several different ones. And I will take a reference photo of the cows. And I might take a reference photo of the place, but it's never to copy the photograph. It's really to give me some information that I wasn't able to get visually. And part of my training when I was in art school was something that uh, has paid off for me today that I recommend you all do. And that is to go outside and paint what you see when you get back in your studio from your memory, training your memory to mix the colors, to, to see the forms, to see the shapes, and just simplify it. But try to do that. You'll really grow in your vocabulary as an artist if you do that.
Um, okay, I've got a few more things here. And <laughs> um, this is what I'm doing at home if I'm in my garden doing, you know, one of my paintings that keeps me painting even if I'm not working on something really important. So Sarah asked me a question once about how do I get the glow? So I couldn't even show you how to do that. What that really becomes is, and you can see that in my paintings, I do a lot of layering and glazing. So you might try experimenting. And I like to paint things the way they grow. I know the sky is kind of a light green down at the horizon. Try painting that. Then I know that the sun comes up and affects that. The sun is warm. So let your, your initial paint layers dry and then add some warm over it. Just a thin wash and, and see what happens. That's what nature does. So try to do things the way nature does and you will learn a lot and you'll, you'll come up with some really interesting effects. So, does anyone have any questions, comments? I think it's fairy dust. It's fairy dust. <laughs> um, fairy dust. Maybe it is fairy dust. <laughs> I, I, yes, I have a mantle in our sunroom, which is like our main room that we sit in, mm -hmm. and I walk through that room constantly throughout the day, and on my mantle, there might be something over it always, but the ledge always has the painting I'm working on or the paintings I'm working on, and I find that really beneficial because your subconscious must play some role in all of this. And your knowledge that you gain as you've painted all through the years, there's all this stuff inside you that you couldn't even put a name to that you know and have learned. And for me, when I look at that painting, I will tell you that I don't always have the answer then, but the answer comes to me. It might be in a dream, it might be in the shower, it might be when I'm walking my dog or cooking dinner with my husband, but it, in that second, I know it, it's right, and I'll do that. And it almost always is the right thing or some version of that. So studying it in a different way. I mean, sometimes I'll just sit in my chair, which looks at the mantle with my coffee, go, okay, what do you need? <laughs> Doesn't always give me the answer, but in time. I mean, I picked up a painting in my studio that had been there 15 years, and I didn't know what to do with it. And one day, I don't know what I was doing, but all of a sudden it came to me. I went upstairs to the studio. I picked it up. I did it. It's in a, it's in a gallery right now. Oh. So... Trust yourself, trust your instincts, trust the knowledge that you gain by doing a lot of work. You want to talk about that? <laughs> How much time do you spend painting every day? That varies from day to day. Uh, I make myself in the summer right now, only spend two hours at the most in my garden during the week. During the week is for working. Um, which is really hard because I don't know about you all, but this year the weeds, every time it rained five inches, they grow five inches. Uh, so, but I, I make myself be disciplined and work as, as long as I can throughout the day. Yes? Can you um, tell us a little bit about your palette? What colors oh, you like? Oh, my palette. Yes, I certainly can. I basically use a very limited palette. For years, I only used cad red, ultramarine, and cad yellow. 
Yep. Uh, <laughs> that's all I used for several years. Then I added the cool and the warm. So I'll have cad yellow, but I'll also have lemon yellow. So I have two of each, the warm and the cool, and that's it. I don't use black and white. Um, I mix my own burnt sienna. Um, I try to mix my, all my greens are mixed. Um, why do I do that? I want my paintings to be a statement, a statement that works color-wise, that doesn't upset you internally. People tell me that my paintings give them peace. I hear that all the time from people that own them.